This is Jeff Mucci with IoT Innovation, and today, just in time for Halloween, we're going to be discussing cyber physical IoT. More specifically, we're going to be reviewing Germany's Industry 4.0 initiative, but first, a few words from our sponsors in Ritsu and Telecom Careers. This episode of IoT Innovation is sponsored by Anritsu. Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. What's at stake? Well, jobs and economic growth are at stake. Germany's future competitiveness as a production center depends largely on their ability to transition from the current technologies that they have from uh, industrial manufacturing to uh, digital technologies around Internet of Things. There are concrete estimates that the economic impact on Germany could be as large as 153 billion euros over the next five years. In addition to strong support from uh, German manufacturers and software companies like uh, Bosch, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and SAP, the federal government plans to support small to medium-sized, what they call hidden championships, uh, hidden champions and the use of these key technologies for uh, the next round of uh, industrial revolution. In the near term, the Germany Industry 4.0 program will focus on manufacturing, specifically Internet of Things production. Let's take a look at this uh, Essentials 4.0 slide that talks about the semiconductor process materials uh, segment of the industry, the design technology, cyber physical systems, and smart system integration. Fundamentally, these four building blocks are what needs to be put in place today that will allow us to start implementing smart production. Once smart production is in place, then you can start moving into smart health, smart energy, smart society, and smart mobility. In the mid to long term, applications will continue to evolve with support from the German government. They've committed to spend more than $500 million into the program. The German Industry 4.0 program has strong support from academia as well as industry leaders. For example, Robert Bosch company has been outspoken in their vision of becoming a digital company. Other key players include SAP, a leading manufacturing ERP supply chain software program that has extremely deep penetration globally amongst manufacturers. Uh, this program ties into the European Union's Horizon 2020 Economic Development Program which we're gonna talk about in a future IoT innovation episode. Um, but finally, I'd like to mention the, the government has signed a strategic agreement with China to collaborate on small plant uh, production manufacturing initiatives. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. To put things in perspective, let's review previous industrial revolutions. Industry 1.0 circa 1784 was based on mechanical production equipment driven by water and steam power. Industry 2.0, circa 1870, was based upon mass production enabled by the division of labor and the use of electrical energy. Industry 3.0, circa 1969, was based upon the use of electronics and information technology, or IT, to further automate the production process. Here we are today talking about Industry 4.0, which is gonna set the tone for the next 20 years. It's gonna be based upon uh, connecting the cyber world to the physical world, which is going to require frameworks and systems and software. To help us kick off today's program, I'm going to play a short video interview with Helium President Rob Shandhoek, who recently attended a presentation in, in San Francisco on Industry 4.0 by the man who actually coined the phrase German Industry 4.0. This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and on today's uh, IoT Innovation episode, we're delighted to have Rob Chandoke, who is President, Chief Operating Officer of a new company making news and making waves today called Helium. Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's nice to be here. Thanks, Jeff. Before we dive into your announcement this week, why don't we talk a bit about a session you set in, uh, in, on, in San Francisco talking about the Germany Industry uh, 4.0 initiative. Yeah, it was actually pretty opportune. I had gotten invited to it by a, a friend of mine and um, actually got to hear about the initiative from, from the gentleman who coined the phrase uh, Industry 4.0. And it was interesting for me because in, at Healing, we've been thinking a lot about industrial enterprise. And what I saw was a real focus in the EU on a part that is, I think, less 
clear in the United States, which is around the standardization of processes that have to do with work in the factory. Um, the other thing I observed is that they're also very focused on how do we use IoT to help make the, the working environment better? How can I make it better for the employee, for the factory worker, for the more than just for the knowledge worker? What were some of the uh, any, any more specific key takeaways that you gleaned from the session? Um, actually, for example, how they do make it better for us at work, and uh, you know some of the maybe potential challenges of of uh, uh, bringing IoT to to uh, the manufacturing floor. Uh, I think one of the things that was interesting to me because it's a topic that that it's a topic that I've really thought about a little bit, which is how you bring machine intelligence out when you're in an environment. Uh, where, where humans actually have a lot of the expertise. And, and the one thing about a lot of the manufacturing that Germany talks about is it's very skilled manufacturing. It is a highly skilled workforce. They work on very complex things, whether they're building you know, equipment for fabrication of silicon circuits or they're you know, building very high-end other uh, electronic or machinery kinds of uh, tooling. And what they were using the IoT stuff for, in addition to machine intelligence, is making it more flexible for the worker to be in there. So if somebody uh, could rotate through five stations and maybe uh, someone was sick that day, they could have a machine come in and assist. So it's more than just uh, just being a pick and sort kind of thing. They actually could know what the task is and actually be handing tools and parts to the worker at the time and maybe helping them to place them. And that in a lot of ways make, made the people more productive without taking away their work. And there was a lot of stress, at least I saw in the presentation, about how that partnership could work. And I think that's actually a really interesting way of applying machine learning and, and uh, what people call artificial intelligence. Yeah. Well, last week I was in Shenzhen for a Huawei Developers Con Congress. And uh, one of the central themes of that program was the Internet of Things and, and connecting it to the the physical world. Uh, they also talked a lot about big data and, and cloud, but I'm, I'm kind of curious from your point of view, before starting Helium, you were at Qualcomm. Mm. Um, we're seeing initiatives in China. We're, we're, we just talked about this initiative in Germany. Uh, you're, the EU as a whole has an initiative they're calling Horizon 2020. What are you seeing kind of from your chair around the world in terms of adoption of IoT technologies? And then maybe talk a little bit about vertical markets uh, from your point of view. I mean, IoT, let's, let's start by just, you know, making, talking about the elephant in the room. IoT is sort of a very broad term. It can go from everything from heavy industrial sensing uh, to precision agriculture to consumer electronics. Like you could argue that uh, the new Amazon Echo is an IoT device or the things that I worked on at Qualcomm, which is the, the all join open source uh, protocol and system, which is the all scene alliance. All of those things you could argue are IoT. And, what we've tended to focus on and what I've sort of been working on for the last year at Helium is really the part of IoT that is about that sensing and control of the physical world. So if I look around the industry, you'll see it divided up by segment, not, I think not surprisingly. So the folks that are thinking about connecting new things to the internet, which is really what IoT is about, are thinking about in the segments where they think it will make business sense for them. So you would have a com company perhaps like Apple or Google may be thinking about how do I connect things in the consumer's home, like what's going on with Nest or what's going on with HomeKit. Um, and for Helium, we probably fit a little bit more into where companies maybe like a Cisco or a GE or maybe some of the big consultants you'd be thinking about, which is how do I solve business problems, whether they be manufacturing or, or, or anything that involves an interaction with the physical world, how do I make those things better, make those processes better, make maintenance better, make uh, assist my uh, workers better in, in the segment that I'm already very comfortable in and all that I have basically a practice in. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, take a short break and then uh, I want to come back and talk about your announcement this week that's been making waves on all the tech uh, blog sites um, and then talk a little bit more specifically about the company as a whole. But uh, again, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right. I'll sit tight. So let's take a look at where we are today and where Germany Industry 4.0 is today. Um, I'd like to focus on kind of four areas. Number one, uh, it's still a research project. Number two, it's focused on standards and IT projects. And number three, it's gonna include IT security. And number four, it's gonna require a massive change in processes that will require qualifications of new personnel, new training, and new components throughout the production process. So I mentioned 
process and, and true to, I think, stereotypical German form, um, they're going to focus on process. And if you take a look at this slide, it's really a focus on smart production. Future applications include smart cities, health and mobility. And as these industrial IoT applications take root, we're actually going to see a shift in the uh, cultural norms. I'd say if you have teenage, teenagers today, it's going to be more of a cultural shift than we have today. Um, the jury still is out in terms of what um, kind of the future is going to look like, but uh, a lot of people talk about autonomous driving cars. Uh, I think there are going to be continued concerns around privacy and uh, security is going to continue to be a major issue. Here's another slide that really talks about three different areas of the process and framework that Germany 4.0 represents. Uh, number one, there's a technical level. Number two, it's a semantic level, meaning what language and, and what logic will be used behind these production processes. And then number three, what's that user interface going to look like? I'd like to wrap things up today with a few closing comments. So we're going to put up a slide that uh, talks about the, the fact that Germany and China have signed an agreement uh, to focus on this industry 4.0. Uh, several publications have mentioned that the Made in China 2025 initiative that we talked about last week on this show was a, a derivative of Germany's Industry 4.0 program. In my opinion, Germany, China, the EU, and the United States are competing for who's really going to be the industrial leader over the next 20 years. What I saw last week in China at the Huawei Developers Congress, Huawei is not sitting still. They're moving forward with their own set of standards, their own initiatives, in an effort to stake out a leadership role in industrial IoT, in cloud computing, and um, I think they're going to be pretty tough competition for U.S. companies and European companies uh, to really succeed in this, uh, this new generation. Thank you for joining us this week on IoT Innovation. Uh, in closing, I'd like to suggest you check out our story about Helium on RCR Wireless News. It includes a video interview with the president and COO of Helium Systems. Uh, they announced this week an IoT framework that will allow enterprise and industrial IoT companies to scale into the millions of endpoints securely with extended battery life and extended uh, range on, on wireless circuits. Um, I believe that um, this type of module that we're showing on our screen right now is exactly the type of module and the type of uh, uh, integration embedded systems that the German Industry 4.0 is all about. Make sure you join us next week. We'll be talking about the Horizon 2020 initiative that's uh, really being driven by the European Union. Thank you. IoT Innovation is a production of RCR TV. To find out more about IoT innovation and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.